Computer memory is built from D flip-flops. Let's see how. We can build a two-bit memory with uh, inputs C for control, that's going to tell us whether to read or write memory, A for address, that's going to tell us where in memory to read or write, so that's to say if we have two bits in the memory we just need two addresses so one bit would be enough and in the case that we're writing memory we will need a data input to tell us what to write to the bit that address points to. Meanwhile in the case that we're reading we will need a data output to tell us what's in the memory location that A is pointing to. So the summary of that is that when C is zero memory should stay the same and when C is 1, the bit addressed by A should be overwritten with the DN input. And the rest of memory, the other bit in other words, should stay as it was. Meanwhile, the data output should always be the current value of the bit addressed by A. So what's going to happen in this picture is that we will have two D flip-flops representing the contents of memory locations 0 and 1. And let's deal with the output first of all. A is going to tell us whether or not we want to read Q0 or Q1. And that's absolutely asking for a mux. Slap in a nice big mux just there and we feed in q0, q1 and we take our output from the mux and we use our address to select between. Mux was kind of built for this job. Okay, so now we need to figure out what controls the D signals of these circuits. We've discharged this obligation, but we still have to think about this one. Well, we don't have to reach terribly far to realise that each bit of the memory does one of two things. It either stays as it was, or it takes a new value from D in. So that also calls for muxes. Okay, so each D is chosen by a mux and it could be given by DN, or it could be given by the old value of the memory. So our feedback loops allow memory to stay the same. And then we have to ask, what on earth is making the decisions about which to do. Well, first of all, we can straightforwardly say that whenever we're doing a memory read, we're not changing anything. So that calls for the traditional technique of AND masking. Stick in some AND gates. And we wire one input of each up to the control signal. So that straight away gives us the property that when C is zero, these muxes both get zero and each memory updates from its old value. So now we have to figure out uh, when C is one, uh, how to tell the correct uh, memory location to take its value from DN. And that means every memory location needs to be able to detect its own address. So the detector 
for memory location zero is straightforwardly a NOT gate, and the detector for memory location one is straightforwardly a piece of wire. So when zero comes in here, this is one. When one comes in here, this is one. So what we then do is wire the address line also up to those detectors, and we've built our memory. So let's see the summary. We used a MUX to choose between the outputs controlled by the address. We used a MUX also to choose between old value, new value. We chose between reading and writing by using AND masking, and we got the address incorrect by building detectors for each address.